Uh, well, no, we're, we're good. Oh. Yeah, no, there you go, live, just like that. Boom. Oh, boom. Internet hey. TV, boom. Minneapolis is like, me. click the button. Ready. We're, we've been doing this for 13 hours now. We can go. Yeah. And you got rid of the red shirt, so I guess you're not the first one. Woo! No. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The I thought he was wearing that to be like the first victim of the launch or something, but <laughs> no. But hi everyone. Uh, uh, Dr. Kobrick, yeah. uh, Yuri's nice, and Dr. Ba well, not a real not doctor, Dr. but Bailey. Yeah. Uh, d Mr. Bailey, also of Yuri's night, sporting the pins. Yeah, we have lots of bling on. And made an announcement. You made an announcement on YouTube. Yeah, not on YouTube, on Twitter. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Yuri's night has announced the 11 Spirit of Yuri's night, and we're proud to award astronaut Ron Garrett, who's. So uh, Ron is in orbit right now on the International Space Station, and he's been sort of helping out and he's trying to promote space uh, with Yuri's Night a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit about sort of how he's contributed and why he was selected. Uh, but we're really excited about this. this is a annual award. First year was given it to private astronaut um, Richard, Richard Garriott. Yeah, I'm kind of tired too, but I, at least I slept a little bit. But. Uh, they just heard the news. And they're so excited. Like the shuttle it takes a second for the yeah. sound to make it over. Right. They're really right. happy about this. Yeah. <laughs> so we're right next to the tweet up tent for those that are didn't know that. That's where the cheering's coming from. So astronaut Ron Garin, uh, he's involved with a group called Fragile Oasis, and the, the goal for them is to kind of use their orbital perspective to look down on Earth and show us how we all kind of live together and how our planet is very fragile, and it's part of the environmental movement and the overview effect, uh, which is really an important aspect of, of the experience that an astronaut goes through, and one of the, probably one of the key things that all of them experience is that overview effect. So um, Ron graciously asked us, just called up Tim or emailed Tim, and then we, uh, back in a year ago, this, this month, I believe, and said, hey, can you send me a Yuri's Night shirt? And we're like, yeah. Like, Actually, it was worse than that. He <laughs> said, would you mind, would you allow us to have a Yuri's Night party on board the International Space Station while I'm up there next April? Yeah. And uh, I, I conferred with the board and that, that was the best idea we had ever had. Uh, yeah. Heard was his night in space yeah. uh, on April 12th. Uh, we were really excited to help out any way that we could, made sure that they got everything that they needed, and uh, yeah. check out yurisnight.net for really cool pictures. Pictures of uh, the whole International Space Station crew wing Yuri's night the yeah. t-shirts. Uh, they had fun parties. They gave us cool pictures. They did uh, dinner and a movie. So that was their big Yuri's night event. So um, the um, proving that no matter where you are or what limited resources you have, you can have your own Yuri's night yes. event. Crew of six to seven can easily do an event. So oh, yeah. anyone can do it. So uh, thank you again to Ron, and we're happy to announce this. And Ron has graciously recorded a video acceptance speech. Beach, and it's available on the Fragile Oasis blog, and you can find it through Yuri's Night as well. We've just put out a press release. And I believe Ron is tweeting or trying to get the tweet out about accepting and going to the blog as well. So it's hard to tweet from space. It's, it's very it's difficult. It's actually really hard to tweet from the press site. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what's going on except for the giant clock next to it. And it kind of tells me things are going well. Things so, like yeah, we well, had to come no, in way anymore. Yeah. Exactly. You can Visual cues, visual so cues. It's really helpful to have them everywhere for me. So that's that's been important. And so Yuri's night, the one last thing, call for executive is still open. It closes in a few days on July 12th. So if you're interested in helping um, with this global education outreach initiative, uh, we encourage you to apply. It's going to be a fantastic year. Just now for everyone is that uh, everyone's going to be like, oh, 2012, end of the so Yuri's Night is really going to focus on 2012, the new beginning or the beginning of a new space era. So it's really as we move into the second uh, half of the century of space flight, we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of human space flight. And so now we've really got to be looking towards the future and how we're going to be developing new vehicles, uh, new everything, new how we bring people into space flight more, make it more personal. So that's really a key aspect of how Yuri's Night is tied to all of this. You know, we are in a very exciting point in human space flight. I mean, it it yeah. seems like this is a depressing time, all yeah. of the space shows, but this is a new beginning. This, isn't a, this is a new beginning for us. Right. When I look um, around and I see all the capsules that we've got here on site, mm -hmm. the press can go and see. We talk about all the new yeah. rockets. I can see launch gantries all up and down the road. Uh, it's amazing to, to think that we're really on the cusp of something so amazing and, and so many more people being able to go up. 
and have somebody like Ron Garen. I, yeah. He was actually just talking to the tweet up. Yeah, he, uh, the tweet up. He called crew. down and they gathered around a face. Gathered around a phone on speaker and they all got to talk to him for I don't know, like 10 minutes or something. It's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Ron, thank you so much for all the work yeah, that you're doing thanks, and the whole Fragile Oasis crew from space and from Earth to make sure that people understand what a fragile oasis that we do live in and uh, really get a, a glimpse of how fantastically fun it is to be up in space. You guys look like you're having a wonderful time. Yeah. And thanks for the photos, too. Uh, photos, and we'll try to get those online as well. Some new ones as well. So, and, yeah. and like <laughs> you said, if you're interested in being part of an amazing team that makes incredible things happen, go to yuriesnight.net, sign up to be part of our global executive team for 2012. We need some really key people to help make huge events all over the world happen, and uh, that could be you. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And so do you want to, you. well, we oh, got a second. Lots, we got time. Okay. Yeah. Talk so, about this Lithuania. This is a good story. This is a little Yuri's Night story. So, apparently, the Penguin Republic in Lithuania celebrated Yuri's Night. And, uh. Um, got wind of this and there's some photos and this little guy is Yuri Vander Legend and um, so I've adopted him and I, I'm on a diplomatic mission with him to see the launch so <laughs> he's down here in Florida and he'll be living in Cambridge and so yeah so he's a Lithuanian Lithuanian penguin, penguin but he's branded to look Republic. like Yuri Gagarin he's got uh, he's gold and he's got uh, Yuri painted on him that's so cool. Yeah. And, and he said he has his own <laughs> he has passport. His own passport. So, um, I mean, is that? You know, if to get the proper credentials for becoming media to come to this prestigious event, you really need to have a key passport. So, yeah, he has his own passport. You can't really see it on the air, but I'll put a photo <laughs> out there. Or you can go to Penguin Republic on Facebook. Um, it's really Don't awesome. Don't show off his stats. Oh, Somebody whoa. can totally might, steal his yeah. identity. Oh, no. Yes, that would not be good. His birthday, does of that course, have, is this year, RFID? April 12th. <laughs> does it have RFID on it? It might. I think it might have a chip in there. That might be why, yeah. <laughs> so we really appreciate yeah. Lithuania um, yeah. contributing to Yuri's night in such a neat way by yeah. sending us uh, Yuri Vander Legend to, for our executive director to wear. We appreciate it. Um, <laughs> and for all the pictures from around the world, if you go oh, to uh, live.yurisnight.net, there's a, uh, a cool photo montage that's yeah. been put together with pictures from space, from all around the world, from different events. If your event's not in there, make sure to put one together and uh, send it in. Information is on the website about how to send that in. Yep, absolutely. We have over 50 of them up there from our over 600 events this year, over 600. So officially it was 577, but those are the ones that we confirmed and registered. And then we had like 68, 70 other events that we just couldn't really get the final steps in for the registration. So over 600 in 75 countries, possibly more than 75, we have to check. Uh, All seven ISS. continents <laughs> and yeah. space. And space, yes. South Pole always is a good one to have. That's fine. So, and in 2012, yeah. we're going to do even more. So we're looking for about a thousand events in 2012. Yes. If you don't think that you have time to be on the global executive team, but you do love space and you think, man, people around here would love a cool party in April, you should register your event at yuriesnight.net. Make sure you go. Um, you start putting something together now. It can be really easy. We did yeah. something quick in D.C. and it, uh, we had a couple hundred people show up <laughs> at a yeah. bar in D.C. Yeah. It was very easy. The, the, everybody had a great time. Um, and I guess we, for those that don't really know what Yuri's Night is, and we kind of skipped over that no. in the intro, but that's okay. It's a worldwide celebration to bring people together for human space flight, April 12th every year because of Yuri Gagarin's first flight and the first shuttle flight, both on the same cosmic date. And so that's why this date was picked. Um, and this, we've celebrated 11 years now, so it'll be the 12th year. On the 12th, 2012, numbers lay with, of course. And uh, people celebrate in different ways. So from a backyard barbecue to, like, I think I heard 10,000 people in one in Stuk or something in Germany Probably. at one of the events. So there's, and uh, NASA aims at uh, Education Outreach Day, both this year and last year and a couple years before that, where they had 6,000 students from the Bay Area that all came to Ames and got to see all the hardware and learn about space exploration. So it's the whole range of everything out there. And, of course, uh, Space Vidcast, the biggest party or event in the world. That's right. Yeah. Global webcast. They have had 10,000 viewers per hour both this year and last year. So that's 120,000 people one year and then uh, 60,000 the other year because they did a 12-hour two years ago and a six-hour last year or this year. We're planning a three-hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're supposed to go back. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so uh, we're looking forward to 2012 and being in touch with everyone and uh, hope everyone's having a great summer and really enjoy 
For this launch, the last shuttle launch ever, it's uh, very historic and important that you witness this launch, and I'm glad you're all tuned in here, because then you get to interact with each other, and uh, that's also a key part of it as well. well. I'd like to thank you both for coming on. Yeah. We're, uh, we're at about, about 30 minutes before we lift the T-9 hold. Um, this is the last hold in the countdown clock, for those who don't know. So once that T-9 clock uh, starts counting from T-9 minutes, um, that's it. They, they, they're in the final portion of that countdown. Wow. And Barring a technical issue, yeah, yeah we're right. Uh, they have actually gone all the way down to T minus zero. They've even fired the space shuttle main engines and oh still not launched. Uh, so that that could happen. Highly unlikely. I mean, they have sent so many teams out there checking this vehicle over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is this is the most well understood <laughs> shuttle flight ever. We're really only waiting on weather, and we're looking really great for that. Yeah. Uh, for those yeah. people who are new to space vidcast, uh, for, for those. Who who are new to Space Vidcast, we're going to go away, so you're not going to hear us talk through the shuttle launch, because you know what? We know you don't want to hear us. You, <laughs> not much. What you want to hear is NASA. You want to see the orbiter take off in all its glory from the pad. You want to, You just want to experience that, but we are going to turn up the volume. We are going to do a couple cool things. Uh, first, uh, the the estimated time to launch and the ad that you see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, both of those are going to disappear when the T-minus 9 clock starts counting. Right. At T-minus 1 minute, assuming we're still counting, and that's a very safe assumption, I think. Assuming we're still counting T-minus one minute, a ascent graphic is going to slide across the screen. And it's going to give you some amazing information, altitude, right. speed, uh, g-forces, and it's going to get updated in real time. And I believe we're the only place that gives you. There were six different parameters we're going to throw up on the screen for you, and you're going to be able to watch this as the vehicle is lifting off. You're going to see all these numbers going up in real time as they're reaching towards orbit, orbit all the way up through Miko. We're going to come back to you after main engine cutoff. We're going to we're talk with you a little bit more before we call it a day, um, but we will continue streaming all the way through wheel stop uh, a couple weeks from now when Space Shuttle Atlantis finally returns for America's last shuttle flight. Exciting. I, it's, exciting. Uh, it's, it's bittersweet, you know. It's it's sad to see. <laughs> yeah. I grew up with the shuttle. It's overpowering. It is, <laughs> it is. You're right? But with the shuttle and. Um, I'll be sad to see it go. We're older than the shuttle. Well, well, the launching, not the actual you know, yeah. design. But. Well, and, and we are, but it, it's what we grew up with. It's what we've yeah. always known yeah. as our primary space vehicle, and, and that is an end of an era. You yeah. know, there is there is a closure that's coming. A new chapter is going to have to be written because this one is definitely ending. But to look around, I've seen NPR. I saw Anderson Cooper here. Mm -hmm. um, everybody that anybody in the media world came out because they knew. Elmo was Elmo. here for Pete. Elmo was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that everybody knew that, knows that this is a really important milestone, and I'm glad that we're able to get some of these capsules out, that we've got vidcast here, to tell the story that this is not an ending. It's a new yeah. beginning. It's a new beginning. Yeah. It's a new be beginning. Well, the beginning of the next era. It is. It's going to be a great you era. You can help us with that line, yeah. our tagline for the years. The beginning tonight. of the next 50 years of human space flight. Yeah. That's what 2012 is. It's going yeah. to be what we decide to make of it. And we can choose to make something great, or we can choose to look in the past and complain about stuff. And I choose to do something great. Me too. Yep. Yeah. One of them. Four One of them. Of them. <laughs> right. That was awkward. That's yeah. what that was. We've had more, much more awkward moments than that, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're going to send you guys back to NASA TV just for now, and uh, we're going to uh, count down with you the final, the final launch of the space shuttle. Uh, we've got one more guest we're trying to line up, and uh, we still go for that last guest, possibly. Oh, not before launch. After launch? All right, so you know what we're going to do? We've got enough time to grab some popcorn, maybe hit a bathroom break. Oh, yeah. Um, but definitely get back here before we hit that T-minus 9, because that's really when things get exciting, and you want to be here for that.